Hello crafty friends! Today I'm sharing with you cards that I made using the January Large Die of the Month from Spellbinders for 2023. And here I'm just showing you how I decided to store my dies. I used my paint pen and I drew up those different sections for the flowers, leaves and foliage and then drew around each of the die shapes so I would know exactly which dies go with what. For card one, I'm going to use this set of arched dies and this Rise and Shine paper pad from my stash. And then I'm going to use that die which cuts out the rectangle frame for you as well as the large arched insert. Now you can separate all the arches from each other, which I have done. And then you can have arches of varying sizes depending on what you want to do with them. So here I have got my tape on the straight edge of my arched section. And then I'm going to come in with glue to go around the top. I just figured using glue was going to be a lot simpler than trying to arch the tape around again. So here's my first flower I'm placing on and I did go in and use on my flowers a flower shaping tool, the large ball as well as the small ball um, that you get on your tool and one from Spellbinders. And I'm just going to glue those in place. Tucking that one just underneath and I'll do the same with this final flower. And I had lots of fun working with all the different dyes and uh, combining them to make all different types of flowers and combinations. So that part of the process I find really fun, putting them together and layering them. Now for my flowers, I used a paper pad from scrapbook.com and it's got all the lovely warm shades in it. And it just happened to match really well with the paper pad I'm using. I'm just going ahead and tucking in some of the larger leaves and then I'll come in and balance those ones off with another leaf over on the right hand side of that large orange bloom. I have tried to use a variety of the greens when I was cutting out the leaves so that we had um, different tones to match back with the pattern paper. Now I'm bringing in the sentiments called Outline Sentiments and these were a set of dies from the uh, Large Die of the Month Club and I use them quite often. I find them a really nice size to um, make the perfect sentiment. When you don't want one that's too small or too large, they seem to be just the right size. Now it does come in three parts and I've cut that out of gold um, metallic paper as well as several layers of um, plain cardstock to just lift up the sentiment and give it a little bit more dimension. Now I'm coming in with some of the smaller flowers and I've glued those two in place and one's got that little dark green leaf and I'm placing another little one up the top there above the uh, darker pink flower and then I'm going to come along and place some centers into those flowers. I didn't do that earlier because I wasn't sure what color I was going to use. So that's the first card done. For my second card I'm using our embossing folder of the month and I'm taking a piece of vellum which I've cut in a fancy label shape and I will show you those dies in a moment and it's made this really lovely impression. So there's the dies I used. They're from Hunky Dory. So I'm bringing back in the sentiments and they were the small die of the month from August 22. And I'm using some paper out of the Lawn Fawn uh, Shine and Sparkle paper pad. And I've cut out my sentiment and layered it together. I've got my flowers prepared. You can see I've got the large yellow one with its stem and leaves attached as well as the two uh, on the right side glued at the bottom and where they overlap. So I'm just using washi tape at the top to hold them in place so I can glue the flower part 
down to the vellum. I won't do the stems on all of them yet, but I will do this one. Okay, so I need to give that some time to dry and a little bit of pressure because we're going to glue onto vellum. Now this is the thanks sentiment with its outline die um, underneath it. And I'm going to arrange that on top of the vellum and the flowers so that it hides the bottom of the stems. Now while that has time to dry, I've taken some of the pattern paper and I've cut that slightly smaller than my card base and make sure that's firmly attached. I have also then used some more paper as well as the hunky dory dies in the same size as I cut the vellum and that's going to be placed in the center front of my card and that's going to go directly behind the vellum and the vellum will soften it but it will also um, lighten the back busy background and you can see there I've added foam tape behind the flowers and the wording to pop up that panel then to finish off I'm bringing in some of these lovely peach colored sequins that we got in one of our card kits and they really are a lovely iridescent orange and I'm going to use a variety of sizes so in the pack you get small and large ones so I'm going to scatter those from the uh, top right of the card down towards the bottom left of the card and then I'll place a couple in the center there just to help the eye travel around um, the main image or focal point of the card and there we have it that's my second card all finished card number three I went to one of my drawers and pulled out some of the old-fashioned punches that I have and I'm just showing you here in case you've never seen um, how to use a punch uh, I've lined it up there with the loops and you can see you just keep moving it down and making sure you've got the loops that you've already cut in alignment and then switch it around and head back the other way I like to start in the middle of my paper but it can depend on um, the type of punch you're using as to where you want to start okay so that part of my paper is now ready to the top I've cut my a rectangle of striped paper and now I'm going to go ahead and attach my scallopy bordered piece over top of that and make sure it's nice and firmly attached here is some washi tape that I have in my stash it's a nice thin one that has like a peachy pink background with little gold stripes I have then cut two small rectangles and used my corner chomper to round off all the corners and I'll layer the darker color on top of the lighter peachy red I'm going to then attach that to the center front of my card and all the time I'm building up somewhere to place the flowers that are coming somewhere to really allow the flowers to pop and stand out because they really are the feature of the cards and that's my plan with all the cards I'm making today is for the flowers to be a real feature or real focal point um, on each of the card designs I've um, made today so I hope that um, some of my ideas for using the flowers will be ho uh, helpful for you when it comes to uh, different ways to use your flowers uh, in card designs and I've gone ahead and I've just about glued on all my flowers just finalizing the last one there and you can see I've got um, the largest one up in the right corner and then grouping different styles shapes and colors of flowers across the top there I'm bringing in some of those little tiny leaves and I'm popping those underneath some of the smaller flowers um, I've chosen to put them under smaller flowers because I didn't think it would look right to put those little leaves under big flowers so now I'm taking some of the larger leaves and I think they're more proportionate 
to the um, larger flowers. I like how they look with those uh, flowers better. Then we've got this large flower that I'm going to place over there, just behind our largest flower. And it gives you um, this continuity or sense of flow across the card. Now I'm showing you here a sentiment that I also have left over from one of our previous kits. It's popped up on some foam tape and then a little bit of glue so I've got a bit of wiggle room to attach it. And you may recognize this butterfly, it was also from one of our previous kits. So I'm adding that on for a final little embellishment. And that one's all finished. Card number four. So I've had this idea that I want to spotlight some of the flowers and to spotlight the flowers, I'm going to use some octagonal cutting dies. And you can see here, first up, I'm building up my layered background. I've got white cardstock followed by the green stripy cardstock, each a little bit uh, thinner than the previous. So here are the, um, I don't know if they're octagons, uh, pentagons maybe. <laughs> um, and I've just cut those out with dies. And then I've also foam cut, cut from foam three pieces of foam to go nice and neatly behind them. And that pops them up that little bit and gives a nice firm and steady background for things to be placed on. I then cut some smaller octagonal pieces out of um, the scraps of paper that I have and I'm going to overlap those onto the large shapes. So I'm making sure that I'm only putting some foam on the left hand side of this one. It'll be the right hand side of the next shape and all with only um, foam on one side and glue on the other so that they can be level with the larger shapes. Okay, so they're all firmly attached. Here's my first flower and you can see I've used the flower shaping tool on the back there to give it a bit of curve or dimension when you look at it from the front. And I'm gonna place that one over top of the yellow and white heart paper. It just provides a nice contrast to the color of the flower. Now for leaves for this flower, I've taken one of the fuller um, branches of leaves and cut off the little segment I wanted to add to that flower. I've then got another little layered flower and I'm placing that on the bottom of the stem. For my next flower, I've chosen one of these really pretty um, layered flowers and I am going to put some glue on that. I haven't shaped this one from the back uh, simply because it has lots of layering on the front. So that one's going to overlap the bottom of, sorry, the bottom octagon as well as that little one in the middle so it's got some support behind it. And then coming in and attaching two leaves to that flower and you can see I'm just offsetting them a little bit. And I've tried to use flowers that all have that dark green um, color for their stems or for their leaves. And up the top, I'm bringing in a completely different type of flower. These ones look like little flowering buds. And I'm placing that over top of the larger leaves. That helps fill in the uh, shape as well as helps those little yellow buds stand out from the background. And just adding on two of those lighter peachy pink colours there. Then I've got my Hello die cut from that die set. Like I said, it's one of my favourites and it just seems to work really well. So I will place that over top of my flowers and the octagons and that's going to keep it nice and firmly in place. So I'm just showing you here I've come back in and added a gold center to that flower seeing as the other flowers all had gold centers as well. For card five you might recognize this paper from card number one. These are the 
off cuts or the uh, negative pieces left from the two pieces of paper that I used for card number one. But I'm going to turn this arch and put it in a different orientation so that we get a different look for this card and um, makes it a little bit more versatile when you can use it in different ways. Okay, so I've got my um, arched section glued on and I have a strip of black cardstock that I've also backed with some black foam tape. Um, and here's my first flower. So we're going to make a place for our flowers to go and that's what our black cardstock is for to help them stand out. And I've gone ahead and arranged three of the leafy stems and then dotted them with different colored small flowers. So I'm going to tuck that underneath the edge of our large flower so that they hang in a spray. And then I've done the same again, but this time I've only used two of the leafy branches. And I'll arrange that, when I stop dropping it, uh, arrange that at the top there. So for my sentiment, I'm using the 4U sentiment that came in one of our kits quite a while ago. And I've cut that in gold and backed it with um, three layers of black cardstock to make it pop. Now, I've got some teeny tiny foam squares here that I'm going to go ahead and pop underneath each of those little flowers. I needed to give them time at the base to dry so I could then go ahead and pop them up on foam tape. For card six, I thought I'd pull out my wax seal kit and give it a go to help make a focal point on my card. So you'll see me play with a few different colours here. So the seal I'm using is this one called Mystic Butterfly by Spellbinders. And I'm going to pour out that green coloured wax and just sort of easing it into a circular shape. I'm not professional at this, I'm still practicing, but I do find it lots of fun. So I've put my die, sorry, my seal into the wax and given it time to cool. Now I wasn't happy <laughs> with how it was, so I've remounted the wax seal that I made and I'm going to try again. And that's the brilliant thing about the wax mounts is that if you don't like how it turns out, you can simply mount it and go again. So there's my circle. I've got my seal and you can see it moved, but the actual image itself is nice and clear as well as um, capturing the full image. So now I've got some of the peachy colored wax and I still left some of the green in the spoon. So you'll see a little bit of that as well. So you can see it has a slight variegated color to that seal because there was some green left in the melting spoon, but it still looks really pretty. Okay, so I've cleaned out my spoon this time and I'm gonna go ahead and use some of the yellow wax uh, pieces. Now I use four in my spoon because I like a nice thick dimensional seal and that one I think is pretty much perfect. And you can see I give it time to cool down and then come in with my pokey tool to get underneath very carefully and lift it up. I'm just showing you there to use up the um, wax that's left in the spoon. I'll get my little silicon spatula, scoop it out, form it into a little um, blob and then let it cool and it can go back inside the container to be used again. Okay, so now I'm focusing on getting the card layers made. So I did a bit of a whoopsie here and cut my paper a little bit too small for my card. But that's all right, I have a guillotine or scissors so I can cut it down so I'm happier with the size. So I'm going to be building up a, uh, I don't know, bouquet of flowers. And to do that, I'm starting with my largest images. Now, I'm not sure if you can see in the video, but 
these flowers I've actually gone underneath the um, layer of the flower closest to us that small layer and I've put some little tiny foam squares behind there to help pop it up and give it even more dimension so those three flowers are going to meet in the middle like that and that's going to work towards being a center focal point I've then got different colored branches or leaves from um, our dies there and I'm going to fill up that top section using those leaves and I have had to cut some of the stem part shorter just because I didn't want it protruding down um, past the tops of the flowers and you can see I've also used a variety of shades because my flower stems themselves will are in different colors and I'm going to keep um, consistency there by having different colored leaves in the background so I have these little flower buds or seed pods whatever you might like to call them and I'm going to tuck them on top of the leaves in our background I'm not going to fully attach all the berries down at the moment I'm focusing just on the stems so that if I want to move anything I've still got the ability to do so now that I'm happy with where that's positioned I can glue some of my little uh, seed pods or buds in place right so they'll get some time to dry I've then got some of the larger leaves and I'm going to start making an arrangement of those down at the bottom where the different flower stems join. So my plan is to cover up the uh, stems where they are joining with these large leaves and then have a place to put my nice uh, wax seal that I've just made. Now I didn't like the empty look of the center there of my uh, where my flowers are. So I'm gonna come in and I'm placing some different colored leaves, but I'm trying to match those little leaves to the actual stems of the flowers that are near them. So I'm gonna glue those in place. Then I'm going to come back in with some of the longer large leaves and place those into that leafy arrangement down the bottom. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and glue that gold yellow seal on top of my leaves. Now I'm going to come in and fill in those spaces between my large blooms with some of the smaller flowers that I've got here. And you can see again that those ones have been shaped using a flower tool, so they've got a little bit more dimension to them as well. I think it sort of allows you to uh, feel like they're more in the foreground than the larger flowers are and giving that sense, sense of dimension. So I've cut out a small set of um, or a small sentiment using these scripty sentiments from Spellbinders and I'm just going to place that on top. And I have used the gold again because a lot of the flowers have the gold centers and I've then backed them with black cardstock as well and I've used four layers of the black cardstock just to really bring it up off the page because everything else has a lot of dimension as well I want to fill in some of the gaps that I have where those leaves are and bring in some of that light green towards the bottom of my card as well. So I'm just going in now and putting some glue on the bottom parts of the stems and tucking them in underneath that seal. And I can do that because there is quite um, a lot of space where I haven't put glue all the way to the edge of the seal. And that allows me to slide things underneath nice and neatly. To finish off my cards, I wanted to add a little bit more sparkle in there. Um, so I've grabbed some more of those nice peachy iridescent sequins 
and I'm going to pop those around different parts of my arrangement and even tuck some underneath the leaves towards the bottom of the card. I like the idea of those sequins just popping out so you get a glint of um, sparkle and um, just draws your eyes down and catches your eye with that little sparkle of light. Now to finish off my card I have got a Kaiser Craft gold paint pen and I'm going to give it a good shake. You could use whatever gold pen you have so long as it's I think acrylic based or not water based because it would rub off the wax seal itself. And I'm just very gently running my pen over the intricate design of the butterfly trying to make sure I haven't missed any bits and then I'll add some onto the little moon and stars above the butterfly. I quite like how the seal looks and um, this is one final look at that card and you can see all the dimension there. I will end up snipping off that leaf at the top right of the card. So one final look at all the cards I've made. I hope I've given you some ideas on how to use the large floral die sets that we often get and um, allowed the flowers to be a focal point of your cards rather than just the small little details. I really do hope you have enjoyed my card presentation today and I hope to see you again very soon. Let me know if you have a favourite card on there. That would be great. But until next time, bye bye for now.